everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Reptech 8 GPU mining motherboard. Now this has been making the rounds and I finally got my hands on one. Actually I got my hands on two of them. But today we're going to go over this one and we're going to swap out the motherboard in my first rig for this unit because it is an 8 GPU rig and it works perfectly. Now this review is only going to handle AMD cards because that's all I have. I do not have Nvidia cards. There are special considerations that I really don't know about when you want to use Nvidia on this. So you might want to reference another YouTube video or better yet go down into the description below to our Discord channel, Mining Misfits. There everyone can be much more helpful when it comes to Nvidia. So for AMD today, let's take a look at what we got here. Of course, this card was meant to go into a mining server frame style. So they mimicked a graphics card form factor. If we look on the back of it, yes, it looks like one, except that we have the HDMI output, a USB 2.0 port, your gigabit ethernet, and two USB 3 ports for um, keyboard, mouse, whatever, if you need to. On the front of it, we have a, an available MSATA slot. So you can either, I'm gonna be running Hive OS on this, you can either boot it through USB 3, or the more preferable way is, is to use an MSATA drive. We'll get back to that in a little bit. The CPU is an AMD A6 8500. It's a two core, two thread, plus four graphics cores or whatever it is, just enough so it can actually work. Basically, this motherboard is a old style laptop design put into a new form factor. It's very low power. It's only a 15 watt TDP CPU. And you can even see we're using an SO DIMM for memory. Now before they used to come with four gigs, for some reason now, not that I'm complaining, they are coming with eight gigabytes. So that's great. Um, you do not have a traditional 24 pin ATX power connector on this. This was meant for server and mining and that's it. It has on the back of it, a six pin PCIe power, all the rest of the voltages, it has its own onboard voltage controllers. So you don't have to worry about 3.3 or five volts. You feed it 12 volts and it's happy. Now, no, for people who have not seen this yet, these are not USB three ports. They look like it, but they're not. Um, these are replacing the one X PCIe adapters that you normally use with a riser board. And instead of using that, you plug your USB 3 cable from your riser directly into here. So that eliminates a point of failure and makes the whole system a little more simplistic. And of course we have the regular uh, CMOS battery sitting here and that's about it. And on the back, it's a very plain, but it is a aluminum metal back plate for it. So that's all we have right now. Let's move on to uh, flashing a 64 gig MSATA drive with Hive OS. Now, the easiest way to do it, I think this costs like an extra seven or $8 and the drive itself is only like 23 or $24. You can find them maybe on Amazon for like $19, but they're no name brand. At least this one's Transcend. They're not the most known brand, but it is a name brand. And I'd rather pay the $3 for a little more reliability. So that's why I went with that. This, I open it up nicely. Comes with a little screwdriver, is a MSATA adapter to USB. So this way we can plug it into the computer and use Bolana Etcher and flash the Hive OS image onto the drive and then we can install it into the board. So. There we go, simple as that. Let's go ahead and plug it into the computer. other way you see we got a nice little blue light on it and it's going to act like a usb drive so give me a minute and we'll get set up and we'll do balana etcher 
Okay, so whether you're in Linux like I am or Windows, which most people probably are, uh, Balana Etcher works in, I think it even make a Mac OS version of it. But you load up the program, you tell it flash from a file. We need to find the Hive OS file that you downloaded previously from their website. Select the target, and it's going to find my 64 gig drive that I plugged in. Select that, and as simple as flash it. Put in my password for Linux. And this takes maybe three, four minutes total. Nope, that'll work. Just a random screw. So yeah, that's the only thing that sucks is for some reason RevTech does not give you the screws. So one will one screw will suffice. I mean if you have two, go ahead and put two in, but you basically just need to hold it down. And there we go. So the board is now ready. So we're gonna switch over now to a montage and take out my old motherboard and install this one in its place and get all the wiring management done. So cue the montage.
unknown device. I wonder why it shows the 5700s as unknown device. Okay, so apparently with the Reptex, it just says unknown device in the boot screen, but Hive OS still found seven GPUs. So let's jump over to the computer and get into the remote access and fine tune everything. Oh, and in case you have like one of these little screens or a regular screen and you want to have this little automatic uh, part of Hive OS showing all your cards and the current miner that's running all the other information, you cannot plug this into the built-in, where is it? Right here, the uh, HDMI port. See right now it's disconnected. Uh, you cannot use the HDMI port that's built on to the Reptech motherboard. For some reason it doesn't work with the uh, AMD APU. I have a separate cord right now plugged into one of my cards that I'm actually mining on and it works perfectly fine. So if it doesn't work for you on the Reptech motherboard, plugging in a screen and getting this information automatically through Hive OS, try plugging into one of your cards. I personally plugged into my first card that shows up on Hive OS. It's not the first one that shows up in the BIOS, but it's the first one that Hive OS recognizes and it works fine. So your mileage may vary. Okay, so I even tried making a new worker to try to get everything back in order. And for some reason, it just will not go back in the order. So it's driving my OCD crazy, but everything is running perfectly fine. So the board does work and it works quite nicely. The only thing I can't stand is I can't get the things back, my cards back in the order. Even though they show up correctly in order on the BIOS screen when it boots up. So I have no clue what's going on here. If you have any idea on how to fix this, do me a favor, leave a comment down below and I'll see if I can fix this. And if so, I'm gonna make a video just for that. So. So if you made it all the way to the end, thank you very much for watching. Thumbs up, please. Share this video around and come join us at the Mining Misfits Discord. The link will be below in the video description. And I will see you next time.